What is blood? With scientist Cindy. Blood is defined as the fluid that flows through the vessels of the circulatory system. Blood has three components, plasma, blood cells, and platelets. Plasma is the liquid portion of the blood. More than half of our blood volume is plasma. Plasma contains water with dissolved gases, proteins, ions, nutrients, hormones, and waste products. Blood plasma maintains our body's pH and osmotic balance. Blood plasma brings nutrients to the cells and carries away their waste. Platelets are also known as thrombocytes. Platelets are cell fragments made from the breakup of megakaryocytes. Platelets are responsible for blood clotting. Platelets go to work when the lining of the blood vessel is broken open. Platelets then travel to the site of the wound and act as a bandage to fill in the gap. Platelets combine with proteins to form a blood clot to heal the wound. Blood cells include the white blood cells and red blood cells. Red blood cells are also called erythrocytes. Erythrocytes are highly specialized cells that deliver oxygen to tissues and removes carbon dioxide. Erythrocytes are biconcave and very small. The size and shape of these cells increases the surface area to volume ratio, which maximizes gas exchange. Erythrocytes take up oxygen from the lungs and deliver this oxygen to the cells of the body. Carbon dioxide is a waste product. The red blood cells collect carbon dioxide from the cells and release it to the lungs where it is exhaled from the body. Mature red blood cells do not have a nucleus. This allows for these cells to contain the maximum amount of hemoglobin, which is the protein used to carry oxygen. Red blood cells do not contain mitochondria. This means that the red blood cells do not need to keep or use any of the oxygen that they pick up. The blood also has white blood cells, known as leukocytes. White blood cells are the body's immune cells that function to keep us healthy. Leukocytes function to recognize and neutralize abnormal cells and disease-causing invaders, like bacteria and viruses. Unlike red blood cells, white blood cells are large, they have a nucleus, and they contain mitochondria. White blood cells can be granular or agranular. The granular leukocytes include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The agranular leukocytes include the monocytes and lymphocytes. Agranular leukocytes have only small cytoplasmic granules in their cytoplasm. The nucleus also will lack distinct lobes. All blood cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelet-producing cells, are formed from hemopoietic stem cells. Hemopoietic stem cells are found in the red bone marrow within our bones. Hemopoietic stem cells produce myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. Myeloid stem cells give rise to red blood cells, platelets, and some types of white blood cells. Lymphoid stem cells give rise to the lymphocytes. Neutrophils are the first leukocytes to arrive at the site of an injury. Neutrophils are phagocytic cells that will engulf and destroy invaders. Another type of white blood cell that is granular are the eosinophils. The granules of eosinophils include antihistamines, which calms down inflammation. The granules of eosinophils also includes molecules toxic to parasitic worms, otherwise known as helminths. The last of the granular white blood cells are the basophils. Basophils contain large granules that pick up a dark blue stain and are so common that they may make it difficult to see the nucleus. Basophils intensify the inflammatory response by releasing histamines. 
Next, we'll take a look at the agranular leukocytes. These are the monocytes and lymphocytes. Monocytes give rise to macrophages and dendritic cells. These cells function in the immune system as phagocytic cells, antigen-presenting cells, and cytokine-producing cells. Monocytes give rise to the macrophages. The macrophages live up to their name, which means big eater. These are the largest white blood cells and can phagocytose large amounts of unwanted matter, including bacteria, viruses, and cellular debris. The other type of agranular cells are the lymphocytes. The three major groups of lymphocytes include natural killer cells, B cells, and T cells. The lymphocytes that are natural killer cells specialize in recognizing cells that don't belong in the body. Natural killer cells do this by screening cells for protein markers called MHCs. MHCs are major histocompatibility complexes, and each person has a unique MHC marker. B cells and T cells are lymphocytes that play an important role in the specific adaptive acquired immune system. One form of B cells, called plasma cells or effector B cells, secrete antibodies that bind to specific targets located on the membranes of foreign or abnormal cells. This is also referred to as the humoral or adaptive or specific immune response. There are also memory B cells and memory T cells that will remember what antibody was used to combat the invader. In this way, antibodies will be ready to be released if that same entity is found in the body in the future. T cells provide cellular level immunity by physically attacking foreign or diseased cells. There are many different types of T cells. T cells will screen the body looking for foreign invaders. If a foreign invader is found, they release cytokines, which produce a cascade of events that trigger different immune responses. 